uh, my elevator pitch is is uh, is terrible. <laughs> um, no, it's a uh, it, it's a it's a big book, so it's sort of hard to hard to contain. What I usually tell people is that it's the story of a mother who abandoned her son when he was 11 years old, and then that son 20 years later uh, finding her and trying to get to the bottom of of her big mystery about why she left and what happened to her in her life that led her to such a decision. So I started it in 2004. September 2004, I wrote the first words that would end up being in the Nix. Uh, and I had just moved to New York City after finishing grad school. Uh, and um, I was, uh, my first apartment in New York was a one month sublet in Queens. Uh, and uh, it was like a home base while I you know, looked for more permanent digs. Uh, so one room in a house that I shared with a, a bunch of uh, guys who were all working on the same road crew. Uh, and uh, whenever they weren't at work, they would be in the living room like playing enormous amounts of Call of Duty uh, and, uh, and, and often in their underwear. Um, so anyway, I, it was my first month living in New York. I was like exploring the city. Uh, and one of the things that happened in that month was that the, the Republicans had their presidential nominating convention at Madison Square Garden. Uh, and there were a lot of protests you know, um, it was the it was Bush Cheney second term, uh, the height of the Iraq War, and uh, and so I went down and watched all the protests. Um, and then at the end of the month, uh, uh, I had this awkward day where um, I had to be out of my sublet in the morning, but I couldn't be into the new the, the apartment that I had found. I couldn't be into my apartment until that night. So I put all of my stuff in my car and I went to work. And I came back that evening, and the car was empty. Uh, it was everything had been stolen. Um, uh, including the um, the computer that I had written, I had saved everything that I'd ever written on, you know. So all 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 of my writing vanished. Uh, so I was sort of sad about that for a while, and then I um, and then I decided to write something new, and I decided to write the thing that was that I'd was most interesting uh, that I'd recently seen, uh, and that was the the protests of the RNC. So I started writing about that, uh, and that that ended up being the first part of the Knicks. It did, yeah, because everybody was uh, talking in 2004. Everybody was talking about, well, if you know, speculating about whether what happened in '68 in Chicago would happen again in '04 in New York, and uh, I was oblivious back then. I was like, "What happened in '68 in Chicago?" I had, I had no idea. And then I started researching it, and uh, and the story just, uh, I don't know, it tugged at me. It was it was kind of amazing. So I I had this idea that I would have. I don't know, it just it was a kind of symmetrical idea. I would have a mother who went to the protest in '68 and, and a son who. Uh, was at the protest in 2004, um, and that's that, that's where it all began. And uh, and then I tried to figure out, you know, the their dynamic from there. One of the interesting things about researching the book was I encountered a lot of people who had been at the at the protests in 1968, and they had radically different opinions 40 years later of the same event. You know, um, Some people thought it was uh, kind of the height of uh, the counterculture movement. Other people thought of it as a giant mistake and a waste of time, and, and a, lot of, a lot of stuff in between. You know, so um, how people remember their own past ended up being really interesting to me. I mean, my main character, uh, Faye, the mother, um, uh, she has a sort of fantasy about what her past was like. You know, she, she touched ever so briefly Briefly uh, onto the, 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 the kind of the, the counterculture, the protest movement, and that short time that she spent there ends up meaning much to her later in life. You know, ends up being almost more important to her. The fantasy that she has of that time ends up being more important to her than than, than her real life. Uh, and uh, and so yeah, so I was really thinking about how memory can can operate on us, and uh, and how sometimes those memories can can um, can become even more powerful than than our day to day experiences. The Nix is a spirit of the water that you find in uh, Scandinavian and German folklore. It has a lot of different names depending on which country you're in. Uh, it's known as a Nix or a Nixie, a Neck or a Nocken, uh, a lot of different names. But in the Norwegian version, uh, it's usually depicted as a, a horrible, ugly, ogre or troll type thing that lives in the water. Uh, but sometimes it'll appear to children as a beautiful white horse. Uh, and it'll try to tempt them to climb aboard. And if they do, it'll start galloping. 
and take them into the water and drown them. Uh, it's um, just one of these, you know, uh, f you know, old folk tales where ghosts appear incognito and cause all, cause all, so all sorts of trouble. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I I heard about this story and thought it was. Uh, well, horrifying, uh, but also that, that I was thinking about it from the kid's point of view, uh, how having your very own horse would be maybe the coolest thing that ever happened to them, you know? Uh, and uh, until, of course, they, you know, what happened happened, but by then I was too late. Uh, and so, I don't know, it became a kind of guiding story for me uh, when I was writing the book. The moral of the story seemed to be something like the things that, the things that mean the most to you can sometimes hurt you the worst. And, and so that's something that happens to all the characters in the book. You know, they're undermined by things that mean a lot to them. You know, a, a, a son abandoned by his mom, a sister disowned by her twin, um, a, a, a gamer uh, who's sort of betrayed by the video game he's obsessed with, and, and so on. No, I didn't. It just kept growing. Yeah, I really didn't. A lot of people wonder that. Um, I really didn't intend for it to be this giant epic, but, but I, I, I just fell in love with the characters and, uh, and the story took me to some unexpected places and I, I just sort of followed my gut. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so it, it, it became what it is almost, um, I just kind of stepped out of the way and let it happen.